guys, Megan Massacre here as your PETA 2 lifestyle correspondent, bringing you my favorite cruelty-free beauty tips. It was really important for me to share with you guys all my favorite makeup products that are cruelty-free because as a vegetarian, I really care about animals. And as a girl, I love makeup and the fact that I can combine the two is pretty awesome. The animals and product tests are having harsh chemicals rubbed into their eyes and onto their skin. And afterwards, they're killed and then discarded. And for what? There are actually no laws in the United States that require cosmetic companies to test on animals, yet dozens of them still do. China actually requires animal testing on cosmetics before they can be sold. Last year, PETA actually exposed some formerly cruelty-free companies that are now paying to have their products tested on animals in order to sell them in China. Luckily, a lot of companies are actually pulling their products out of China and also pledging not to sell them in China until the requirement for animal testing is lifted. A lot of countries around the world are actually moving away from testing products on animals. India, Israel, and the European Union have all completely banned testing cosmetics on animals. There are some really great cruelty-free cosmetic brands out there, such as ELF, NYX, Wet n Wild, Too Faced, and many, many more. And you can find them at really common cosmetic and drug stores such as Sephora and Ulta. In order to know if the products that you're purchasing are cruelty-free, all you have to do is consult PETA's cruelty-free shopping guide, or you can check out for the little cruelty-free bunny logo on the package. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to do a natural daytime look. The first step to our daytime look is a concealer. The particular concealer I'm using is by Tarte. Because it's a stick, I'm just going to go ahead and blot it on my face and use my finger to rub it in. And basically, concealer is used for problem spots. So if you think you have circles under your eyes or maybe a freckle or a beauty mark you don't want anybody to see, this is what you use to hide it. The next step is our foundation. I'm going to be using this Tarte foundation, which also has an SPF of 15 in it, which is always really good for your skin. I like to use a foundation brush in order to apply it. All right, it looks like we are ready for powder. The powder is what really sets that concealer and foundation. It smooths everything out, takes away any sort of sheen that you may have. All right, I think we are done. And now it is time to move on to bronzer. I like to use bronzer for basically any part on your face that you want to sculpt. So personally, I like to use it just underneath my cheekbones. Some people also like to use it underneath their chin and around their temples, really anywhere that you want to give your face a little more shape. So the next thing we're going to start with is blush. When it comes to blush, it really comes in an array of colors. Most of the time you see pinks and reds, but for me personally, I like to stick with more of an orange or a coral tone just because those colors work really well with my hair and really well with my eyes. I think it's really important to play around with different colors of blush and find out what really works best on you. This blush is a cream blush. So basically all I have to do is put a tiny little bit on my finger and then just blot it on the cheek and rub it in. And you can do as little or as much as you want. When you're blending in the color of the cream blush, make sure that you're not just blending it into the skin tone, but you're also blending it into the bronzer that we just used to sculpt the cheeks. Our next step is gonna be highlighter. Highlighter is my favorite part of the process because it really, really, really brings out the light in your face. And I'm gonna be using an ELF Baked Highlighter. You wanna put them in any spot where you want the light to reflect, so I usually use them on the tops of my cheeks and also underneath my brows. Now we all know eyebrows come in all shapes and all sizes. And girls, please, whatever you do, leave your natural eyebrow shape alone. I had years and years and years battling eyebrows where I would pluck them way too much to the point where there was nothing left that I shaved them off for years and just drew them on. And honestly, ever since I've grown them back, I realized this is how they really look best because this is how they properly frame my face. I'm gonna be using this ELF eyebrow kit. Comes with a light and a dark. I'm just going to stick with the dark and I'm going to use an angled brush also from OCC in order to properly shape the eyebrows. You really want to use the angle of this brush to help create the shape of your brow. So now that I have this brown color filled in, I'd like to match it to my hair color because it's not brown. But they don't exactly make bright orange eyebrow palettes either. So. 
What I like to do is actually use a little bit of orange eyeshadow over top of the brown color I use for my eyebrows. The color orange eyeshadow I'm gonna use is by a company called Sugar Pill, and they are really awesome. They have a lot of really bright and colorful, cruelty-free eyeshadows. I think it's really important to go with an eyebrow shade that's either the shade of your hair color or lighter, but never to go darker. Now that we have our eyebrows on, it's time for eyeshadow. When I'm doing a day look, I really just go with one shade to keep it really simple and quick. I'm going with a very warm color. It's kind of like a very rusty brown, and it's by OCC, and it's their loose color in Authentic. And I'm gonna concentrate on the crease of the eye towards the outside of the eye. I'm not gonna use a whole lot, just enough to accent the crease. I'm gonna go down around the outer lid and maybe just a tiny little bit under the eye, all towards the outside. Where you put eyeshadow can really change the shape of your face. Personally, I like to put the darker eyeshadows towards the outside of my eyes because it makes your eyes look wider and bigger. Now that the eyeshadow's on, we only have two more steps left. One is eyeliner, and actually this is an optional step. I like it, but not every day, but today I'm feeling it. I like to just do it on the underneath of my upper lid and more towards the outside of the eye. And not a lot, just a little tiny bit, because when you start glomming a lot on there, it could get really smudgy and messy. Which is also kind of a look, but not the look we're going for today. <laughs> the last step for our eyes is gonna be mascara. Now, vegan mascara can be a little tricky to find, so it's best to go online and review brands and reviews before you actually go to the store looking for it. Here I have a really cool vegan mascara by Tarte. It's actually called Lights Camera Lashes. Now, I personally really like to use a lash primer before using my mascara, and that's because it actually creates volume and length underneath your mascara. So go ahead and put it on. It's going to turn your eyelashes white. Don't let this scare you. That's just how it works. Now we just put this mascara on right over top of that primer, making sure to cover up all of that white. All right. We're looking good. It looks like we're ready for our last step, which is gonna be lip gloss. Now there are a whole array of colors of lip gloss. I mean, I have a bunch of lip gloss here. It's actually called Lip Tar by OCC, and it's my favorite lip gloss by far. Um, and you know, they have yellows and greens and blues even, but the most common colors you see in lip gloss are pinks and reds. And you know, this is vegan, this is vegan lip gloss, but most lip gloss is not. And what most people don't know about red pigment is where it comes from, and it actually comes from a beetle, a female cochineal beetle. They actually crush that beetle up. That's actually what makes red coloring, and it's not just in lip gloss and lipstick, it's actually in almost any product that you can see that's red, even products that you eat, and that's disgusting. I would never wanna have crushed up beetles all over my lips. So when you're looking out for these red pigments and you wanna make sure that they don't have crushed up beetles in it, look on the ingredients. Anything that says Carmine, Natural Red 4, is all crushed up cochineal beetles. So I'm going to choose to go with a more nude tone of lip gloss. So here we have a little lip brush by OCC. I kind of just put a little bit on and just kind of push my lips together. Again, lip gloss is pretty light. You can kind of just throw it on quickly. You don't have to fuss over it too much. So after using that nude color, I think I want to add a little pink to it. All right, that lip gloss is good. And it looks like I am ready to take on my day. For more information on all the products you saw here today and other cruelty-free cosmetics, just visit pita2.com.